Hey guys, welcome back. Um, hopefully we don't have any audio or video issues like we uh, normally have crop up here and there. Um, this week we are going to be reviewing our captures from week 20, which is the throttle body motor control. So week 19, we did the TPS signals. Um, we talked about APPS, TPS, and how some throttle bodies have two sensors in them. Pedals have two sensors. The waveforms are typically about the same. Um, we re re reviewed those. And week 20 is going to be the motor control if it has an electronic throttle body. Um, I have not done a sending unit replacement on an 04X3. Um, I have done one on a 328. Um, I pulled it apart to do a sending unit, but it ended up being a chewed up wire on top of the tank. Um, so I didn't have to replace anything. <clears throat> so I'm also going to talk about the circuitry of the throttle body motor control. Um, cause I didn't really cover it much in that video. So we will, we will, I'll try to draw up some stuff. Um, I can't find my Apple pencil. I know you guys know that I have amazing, uh, you know, drawing skills. Um, give me one second. looks like I'm out of focus and I know you guys want to be able to see me. There we go. That's what happens when I push too many buttons. <laughs> Week 21, injector pental bounce. Rob, we covered injector pental movements and voltages a while back. Unfortunately, you didn't have this problem vehicle at the time to talk about your waveform. <laughs> Do a magic trick where I disappear and come back. But when I come black, back, I'm uh, no longer blurry. <clears throat> Okay, um, I'll jump into, well, what do you guys want to talk about first? Um, let me just, let me draw a schematic real quick. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll have to operate with the mouse. Um, but I think it'll be beneficial to, to kind of see how the control works because I didn't really explain how the polarity switches all that well, I think. Let me see if I got the right screen here. Um, I'm not on the screen. There we go, because I know you guys still want to see me. So when we have a throttle body, it's going to be a, a DC motor. Now I know that because the polarity switches, it may seem like an AC signal, like the current's flip-flopping, but it's not. It's just control Z that. And let's draw a circle if we have it. We don't have it U using stuff I uh, not very good with here. There we go. It corrected it for me. Um, this is just a DC motor. This is a throttle body. So we have two wires going into this. Now, normally on a DC motor, you have a power and a ground. This isn't the case on this motor. They can flip flop. So we normally run our wires over to a computer of some sort, throttle body control module. And inside of that computer, uh, we are going to have a couple of transistors. I'm just going to build it as one transistor, even though, or one uh, switch, even though there's normally two transistors in there, one that can pull it to power, one that can pull it to ground. So in the neutral position, this is just going to go straight ahead. And we're going to have two poles here. One is going to be power, one's going to be ground. So we're going to go 12 volts, zero volts. And I am not a, uh, a mouse artist here, as you guys can see. So whenever one is pulled to power, typically the other one is going to get pulsed to ground. So if I want to move this throttle body one direction, I'm just going to hold this to power and the computer is going to really rapidly flip this other switch down to ground. If it wants to run it the other direction, you know, we're going to run this one up to 12 volts and we're going to rapidly pull this one down to ground. So it can flip flop like that. I didn't talk about the internal workings. Um, if I had more time, I would have pre-drawn this a little nicer, but I spent my time going to work and looking for my Apple pencil. 
um, because my Apple Pencil artist skills are, you know, at least like a seventh grade level instead of a third grade level, like my, uh, my mouse drawing skills. So I hope that makes sense. It's not an AC motor, it's a DC motor, but the computer is moving the power and ground to change the direction that that throttle body is going to move. Um, I don't know if that makes it more confusing or if it clarifies anything, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that makes it a little more clear. We will jump over to our Facebook post and with that little bit of background, these waveforms might make a little more sense. <clears throat> so Richard Cook, week 20 throttle body motor on a 2004 Acura TSX, known good. Uh, he got captures with the PicoScope 7 and the Modus Ultra. So in our, in my video, I showed how to check the voltages and then how to check the amperage. And then we did a math channel with the Pico scope that shows that if we do a math channel subtracting um, our two terminals from each other, then it almost mimics what we're seeing on our amp clamp. Uh, so I, I believe that Richard has another capture where these are spread out a little bit more where we can see it. But zoomed out, it's going to look like a big mess on the screen. Um, the pulse width modulation of that throttle body control is going to be so rapid that it is going to be hard to uh, identify until you zoom in. But we can see it looks like amperage down here at the bottom in green, which it is. And then he has a yellow math channel, which is A minus B. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next one because I think he has it zoomed in and maybe separated a little bit here. Okay, here we go. So if we look at the amperage, we're going to have... A zero line normally when we measure stuff on the vehicle everything's gonna be above the zero line unless your clamps backwards and then it'll be below it but with the throttle body motor control <laughs> Rob Ross uh, with the throttle body motor control we are gonna go above and below the zero line depending on which direction the computer is commanding that throttle body to go at idle it typically forces it closed because in the neutral position like I know on a GM LS platform, they will idle around 11 or 1200 RPM if you disconnect the, thr the throttle body. The computer will go into an override mode where it starts killing the injectors to bring that RPM back down to a manageable level. But the reason that manufacturers have that throttle body kind of spring loaded or neutral position when it's not fully closed is so the vehicle does not stall if there's a control issue. If the wire breaks or anything like that, it's going to go to fast idle, and then it's gonna use some other strategy to limit the RPM and limit power. That way it doesn't stall on the highway, you don't get in a wreck, you can kind of limp it off of the road. But in order to control the idle, we have to turn that throttle body around, we have to pull it closed, and then when we rev it up, we're gonna push it the other direction. So we're gonna flip flop our powers and grounds, which we can see here. So this one here is sitting at zero volts, and then it starts toggling up to power. Um, the red channel at this section here, when our current is positive, we are applying power or toggling power to our red channel. Um, so this one doesn't look like it's toggling the ground. It's actually toggling the power where the GM vehicle was toggling the ground. And then we see our current start heading in the other direction. We have negative current whenever this makes the move to holding this one to ground and channel A starts getting toggled to power. Now in the yellow here in the middle, we see our math channel. So we can see that it shows indication of going both directions. So we can kind of have an idea of where the power is going. Is it going open? Is it going closed? Um, Cause sometimes the waveforms, depending on how fast they're moving can get kind of confusing, which I know that it doesn't show the, uh, the slope of how much current we have because of the pulse width modulation in here. But we can see that you know, anytime that this is above the zero line, our current is above the zero line. When it's below the zero line, our current is negative current going through that throttle body. We'll scroll through here and we have captures from the Modus Ultra. So it doesn't matter which scope you guys have, um, you, sh you can still look at these and we can see that one gets held to ground while the other one's being toggled to power. And then when it flip flops the other direction, the other one gets held to ground and then this one gets toggled to power. So thank you, Richard, for sharing both the PicoScope and the Modus. Um, in the video, I started out with the HScope app and the, I was using the HS402 Pro, um, the wired 
two channel scope. And I haven't talked about that scope much because I'm still getting used to it. And I don't want to, uh, <laughs> I don't want to screw up when I, when I do a video specifically about it. So I've been using it more and more just, uh, just getting the hang of it. Oh, that was a different post here. Jira posted one on a 2003 Toyota Land Cruiser. So he has week 17, 19, and 20. I don't remember what 17 was, but we'll probably see it in here. So analog mass airflow sensors. So we did analog on 17. We did digital mass airflows on week 18. This Land Cruiser doesn't have both. That's why he skipped week 18. But analog mass airflow, we see the big jump as it fills the air plenum with air. And then it drops back down. And then we're seeing the gradual increase of airflow into the engine um, as the RPMs go up. Drop back down to normal. Um, there's quite a bit of noise in here, but that's pretty typical from what I've seen on the Autel. The, the factory leads are like the hand tech leads, and they're kind of noisy. Um, every time I've used my brother's. I can't get rid of the noise and I don't, I don't know how I don't use the Autel enough to, to know their filtering system, but all of that looks pretty good. Um, he's just zoomed in a little bit on that one. And then week 19 TPS one and two full throttle blips, and then some rapid on and offs. So this one, let me see what our measurements are. Um, one goes up to 4.3. The other one goes up to 5.1. So they're not exactly the same. And the starting point, um, is different as well. Let's see what the one starts at two and a half. Is that is that right? Yeah, that's kind of strange. So like where GM or some of the domestic vehicles will start with both of them at, at close to zero or 0 0.5 and then one will go up at half the rate of the other one. Um, this one's doing the opposite. They're starting one out at two and a half volts and the other one at one volt and then they're reaching almost the same peak amplitude. Now, the reason that they do split those up a little bit is if we had both of those and they were identical voltages, if our two TPS signals were shorted together, the computer wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Um, it's like, okay, we're, we still have the same curve from, you know, 0.5 all the way up to, you know, four and a half. Four and a half. But if we offset one of them, which Toyota is obviously lifting it off the of ground a little bit and starting from a higher point on TPS2, um, if they short together, the computer say, like, hey, we got an issue. Both of our signals are identical and they're not supposed to be. Um, no weird dropouts or glitches and both of them would go in the same direction. Um, some of the GMs and some of the other domestic vehicles will actually inverse each other. And then, <laughs> um, this one here is the throttle body motor control. Um, blue is current. And so this one we're seeing a little more of the activity of the pulse width modulation in the current waveform. It's not quite as smooth as some of the other ones. Let's see if we have a, a math channel in here as well. Um, yeah, we have a math channel here, which I don't even know how to do the Autel math channels. Um, but they have them built in. So we can see that the math channel mimics the current on this vehicle. Now, did I press the gate button? No, I did not. <laughs> Unless I did when I had the gate opener in my pocket earlier. We, we have the electronic gates, which work sometimes. And Valerie's outside and apparently one of the gates opened up. <laughs> um, and also, I can't remember what the vehicle was. I was thinking it was a Toyota, but I think there's a waveform in here. Uh, I don't know if I commented on this one, but there was a throttle body. I remember the wiring diagram showed a throttle body brake. And what it would do is, unless it was in service information, um, they'd get the throttle body to a certain point and they would lock it. But I'm sure that it was on an early system because most vehicles, they don't want that throttle body held in a certain position at all in case that brake seizes up and causes it to to stick there and you get a runaway situation but if you guys know of a vehicle that has the electronic brake in the throttle body motor um let me know because i cannot recall i thought it was a toyota system but apparently it's not thanks for sharing this one on the toyota land cruiser 
2003 Land Cruiser, and I think I did ask that one. Yeah, that, that one didn't have it. Um, so the 2003 Land Cruiser is going to have the 4.7 liter uh, V8. Doug Wilson, 2012 Chevy Cruze 1.8 throttle motor. It's been a while, but he is still kicking. Hey, Corey, I don't know if you're still in here. You normally pop in for a few seconds and then take off. But welcome to the live stream. Hope you're doing all right on the East Coast there. So we have the ATS scope. And looks like Doug's just doing throttle body voltage here. Um, and, and they're kind of overlaid, so we see one getting pulled to ground, and then the other one gets pulled to ground when that throttle body switches directions. I don't see... Okay, he doesn't, he doesn't have another one. Um, Doug normally stacks up some, some pictures in here, but not on this one. Um, so th this is all we have on this one, which this is normally all you need to look at because... Unless you're setting a code for throttle body overcurrent um, and you stick an amp clamp on there just to see how much it's pulling, there's normally not known good waveforms on the current waveform, but there will be lots of reference waveforms with the throttle body voltage. Thank you, Doug. Um, we had a couple discuss discussions on ignition systems. Let's see here. I can't remember which week this was. Uh, Doug posted up some cam and crank sensor waveforms with ignition from the ATS scope. Known good. Some alternator ripple. I thought there was one more in here. Here we go, John Webb, week 19. So this will be the TPS sensor. Um, Toyota Camry, four pin th throttle body position sensor, had a hard start. Voltage was cause, low voltage was causing throttle body code. So he figured he would scope the throttle body while he was there. So we have our throttle position position sensors here and this one we can actually see the starting point when the key was turned on so we can see that that zero line when the throttle body is closed starts out at a different point um jira's we were talking about how that one was sitting at 2.4 volts and the other one is at one volt uh, we can see that as soon as the key gets turned on they start out um, at a at a stepped rate or a or an offset on one of the throttle position sensors And then this one here, I think, is that current? I'm just trying to look at the, the channel labels. Um, they look kind of mess, messed up and, uh, and weird. No, those are, he's probably just sweeping the throttle body back and forth. But both channels are following each other. Uh, we don't see any strange dropouts or glitches on one that's not reflected in the other. And then this one here is the starting system. Um, so he was having an issue. I think the battery tester on this one, if I remember correctly, um, that might've been Doug's, but one of them, the battery, one tester showed good and a different tester showed bad, but when they scoped it, the voltage dropped too low. This one drops about seven and a half, maybe eight volts while cranking. And if I read the uh, first page, it'll probably tell me if that was before or after the battery was replaced. Yeah, this one had a fit failed cell third image is the battery system test thank you john for sharing that one angel has a 2015 f550 6.8 liter he shows up with all of the fours with the 6.2 and the 6.8s <laughs> ckt integrity for shorts are open oh uh, i gotta read all the comments i can't work my way back Corey says, why do 0 5 volt sensors only report from 0.5 volts to 4.5 volts? And Angel says, circuit integrity for shorts are open. Absolutely. If if we have a any sensor that's 0 to 5 volts, like say a throttle, throttle position sensor, if we were reporting all the way from 0 to 5 volts, and that was 
the normal range of the computer looking at that sensor? Well, zero volts would be when we let off on the throttle, um, throttle body is closed. Well, if we unplug that sensor, the computer's probably going to read zero volts as well. So it's going to think that our throttle is closed all the time. If we press the gas pedal, it's still going to remain at zero. The computer's not going to acknowledge that input from the accelerator pedal. Some vehicles, if we unplug it, might go up to five volts. Well, then the computer's going to think that we're wide open throttle. It may try dumping a bunch of fuel. It's not going to know what's going on. Um, so if we limit it to half a volt and 4.5 volts on the normal input to the PCM, if it sees that sensor sitting at 5 volts, it says, hey, we got a problem. We're either shorted, shorted of voltage or the sensor's unplugged or we're missing a ground. Um, it's going to set a code for circuit high or open. Um, and then if, say, our 5 volt reference was missing, that wire was cut or there was corrosion in the connector, we would drop all the way to ground. Well, since the computer's like, hey, we shouldn't be sitting at zero volts, we should be seeing at least half a volt, it's gonna set a code for circuit short um, to ground or open. Um, either one, they could be open depending on the computer design. <laughs> Looks like I need more than two channel scope. Not necessarily, you can do it with one channel, but it's a little trickier on the throttle body motor control. Also prevents noise. Do you get more noise when you're sitting at the zero mark rather than half a uh, half a volt off? Eight to the power of zero. One channel scopes can get you by on most things. If I was scoping the throttle body motor with a single channel, I would probably go a throttle control one or there's since there's two wires i'd go to the one circuit sweep it a few times go to the other circuit sweep it a few times and then i would if you have an amp clamp i'd put a low amp clamp on there and if you put the low amp clamp on the throttle body motor control then you're going to see a waveform like this green one here that angel shared you won't have the other ones on the same screen at the same time but you will be able to see if that throttle body is getting commanded open and then getting command closed so Angel has one here on a Ford. Um, so this is one that is also has the powers being switched and not the ground. Um, so whenever one we see at zero, the other one gets toggled to power. This one's getting toggled to power, so the other one's held to ground to run that motor control. And it looks like, I'm guessing this period here is at idle. See these sections here are fluctuations. Um, so whenever he ra raises the RPMs up, it's trying to hold that throttle body open. I'm just guessing. Um, and it's not very, it's not super consistent just because, you know, he's probably trying to hold that pedal. And then when he lets off and it returns to idle, it's pretty consistent when they're holding it to idle, unless you have loads on like the AC. If the AC was on, we would see occasional spikes down with, uh, or it, it would fluctuate because it's going to have to raise the RPM. So it's going to let a little bit off and then it's going to shut it down again let a little bit off and shut it down again best place to get your ground when scoping a throttle body um honestly Corey, i i hook my ground wherever there's a easy piece of metal to connect to but i would say that the best ground would probably be wherever the throttle body control module or the pcm is grounded if it's grounded to the block that's where i would go but I'm interested to see what your answer is. You've probably run into something where the ground location mattered more. And then Angel has another image here just zoomed out a little bit. I do get a lot more noise if I uh, connect the ground to the engine rather than the battery. I'm going the wrong direction. Um, I think that was it. Let me refresh the page. Uh, make sure there's no late entries here. Gate opener again. Hmm. One of the neighbors must have something on the same frequency. <laughs> I'm not sitting on the clicker and it's not in my pocket. Both of them are on the counter. Um, <laughs> let me switch screens here to the wrong one. And I will check, uh, make sure no one submitted anything to the Google form and email before we wrap it up. If you guys have any questions, um, let me know. I still have not.
finish the video for tomorrow. Um, I know I'm running behind on everything. So, you know, I said I was going to have my, uh, my next video available the day after the last live stream, and that didn't happen. It's been super busy at the shop, and, and I just keep getting further and further behind, it seems like. Um, no, nothing submitted via email. I like to check that stuff at the end just in case somebody's not a Facebook user and wants to submit a waveform. Um, I didn't bring the other scope home, but the HS402 Pro that I used is a Android tablet or Android based uh, software, which I'm unfamiliar with. And I think that's my biggest hurdle is I'm a, an Apple user and Android stuff is like completely foreign to me. But I have one scope that um, Raymond Salazar sent to me that plugs into the bottom of the tablet. It's a corded one, two channel scope. Um, it's pretty powerful scope, although the input is only rated at 16 volts. Um, so you do have to watch what you're scoping. Uh, use an attenuator, and typically we are going to use an attenuator that's a little bit larger than what we use on the Pico scope. Um, it's not just going to be like a 10 to 1. Sometimes it's going to be like a 40 to 1 just to protect that input if we're scoping ignition or um, injector waveforms. Another gentleman sent me the wireless one. So they actually have a wireless scope. It has a battery in here. Um, it connects via Wi-Fi to the tablet. So you can have this under the hood tablet in the vehicle and start scoping stuff. Um, I've only used it once just to test it out. So once I figure out the software, and I think it would be easier if I used a bigger tablet just because my, my big fingers, I'm having a hard time uh, with some of the operations, zooming in being one of them. Um, this seems like a pretty good alternative to or a very good low expense scope that still has the power to do a lot of stuff if you guys haven't seen this scope in action except for my first video um the gadgets playlist on youtube uh, dennis has a bunch of videos on the hs402 scope and he does all kinds of cool projects that i wouldn't have even thought of using this scope he built one he, he 3d prints stuff as well um, one of the other gentlemen 3D printed this one and sent, put everything in it and sent it to me. Um, but Dennis has one that he printed a case that has a data link connector on it. It has a knob on the back and it just plugs into the data link connector. And all he uses it for is scoping the communication lines. The knob on the back selects which set of communication lines you're connected to. Um, so can, can low, can high, um, K bus, Whatever it may be, there's multiple detents on that on that switch. And so he just plugs it in and then can watch it wirelessly to his tablet. Um, he has one that is used for measuring parasitic draws over a long period of time. Um, so very innovative group of guys. And I really, really want to uh, you know perfect my skills a little more on the H-Scope app before you know doing too many videos on it. I need, need a flat screen TV for them fingers. Um, what else do we have? I think that's it. Did I miss anything on throttle body motor control? I know that there's always going to be cases where you, yeah, you watch this video and you know how to hook up to it, which um, isn't a big deal. And then you're looking at your waveform and you're like, okay, I still don't know if this waveform is good or bad. Um, you know, I'm not, the, maybe not the best at, analyzing the waveform um we did a live stream last year on a jeep commander i think it was um it was a jeep with a v8 and it was setting throttle body motor codes and it was one of our viewer led diagnostic um, live streams and we didn't really come to a conclusion on what was setting the throttle body codes and later on i had found that if i wiggled the pcm if i flexed the connector i could get it to not set the codes um so it was an internal problem in the pcm but sometimes everything looks fine and it's still setting codes for the throttle body so you have to you know just i guess gamble at that point and say is it a pcm or is it a throttle body um on the on that particular vehicle that jeep i called the dealership and asked them they're like you know what we have a known good throttle body sitting on the shelf that we use for testing 
just to prove that it's not the throttle body. So they sent it over. Um, it looked brand new. It's probably when they installed on a vehicle and didn't fix it, so they had to keep it. Um, I just plugged it in, plugged the connector in. I didn't even mount it and cycled the key a few times and the code's still set. So, like, okay, that's when I started flexing the PCM and identifying that my issue was internal of that PCM. So I'm not saying that, you know, just scoping it's going to give you all the answers, but it'll at least verify that you, uh, you have control going to the throttle body. The circuit's not shorted to ground. Um, the amperage isn't overly excessive. Um, it seems like most throttle bodies are using less than, you know, 10 or 12 amps. A lot of them are only using a couple of amps to operate. So if you see something that's pulling like 20 amps on key cycle, then it's going to be an issue. How many times did it open? It's still going. It's opening and closing and opening and closing. Huh. <laughs> it's going to run the battery dead. Yep. Um, I think tomorrow I will... I still have to record it and edit it. But I think our next video is going to be narrowband O2 sensors. I have fault codes for two of them on my van. Um, I have two new O2 sensors for it as well, just in case. But we are going to scope the O2 sensors. We're gonna, And I'm just going to probably combine it all into one video. Um, I will talk about the signal circuit and the heater circuit and how to scope both of those. Um, you can still do that with a one-channel scope. You just have to bounce back and forth but if it's a if you have a two channel scope then you can get it all in one shot i rarely scope o2 sensors i normally just watch the scan tool um, if it has a heater issue i normally use a test light but sometimes if you're especially a vehicle that's already had the o2 sensor replaced and you're still getting codes that's when sometimes the scope gets you know taken out and hooked up to the vehicle and prove what's going on what's happening Storage capacity test? Yeah, I, I probably don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't know what known good is for that. And it seems like even when I do, uh, when I watch oxygen storage on the rear O2 sensor, um, just watching the scan tool, I'm like, is that good or not? I really like when vehicles have two cats so you can compare you know, one to the other. But we don't have emission testing where I live. So it's not five gas stuff and some of the catalyst stuff I'm a little rusty on. Um, I need to brush up on that stuff. Especially because we just, Colorado just adopted um, some carb emission stuff. So we can no longer install catal catalytic converters unless they are carb compliant. Which we normally did anyways, but now it seems like our selection has gone down a lot. And O2. We, we installed catalytic converters on a Jeep the other day, and it was like $1,300, and they weren't factory ones. The factory ones were discontinued. Uh, we, we had to have them shipped in from California, and it was kind of a bummer because, I mean, these vehicles don't have California emissions, but the, ox or the catalytic converters that we have to use are worth more than the vehicles are sometimes. But if people want to drive their vehicle, which they're not rusted out here in Colorado, they have to spend the big money to uh, get it fixed or drive with the check engine light since we don't have emission testing anyways. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think, that, I think that's what we'll do. I'll try to go down early tomorrow and test the O2 sensors on my, my new van and come back home and edit a video and get it uploaded. I know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm going to get busy doing other stuff and it's going to get delayed. But we'll, uh, I'll try to get a video uploaded at least, you know, before Wednesday. And then we'll probably still go two weeks before the next live stream. Just because I know all you guys are busy as well. Um, we're, we're booked over three weeks out at the shop. Our lot's full. Uh, we've been working some long hours, or I have, trying to get caught up. And it seems like we're just going backwards. Um, appreciate you guys. Test the gate first. <laughs> appreciate you guys coming out. Um, those of you that submitted waveforms, thank you. Thank you everyone for watching the live stream and I will see you next time.